With all the free resources out there for the MCAT, you could easily derail your MCAT studying just by getting super overwhelmed with all the options and trying to use each one. So instead, in this video, I'm going to share five categories of free supplemental MCAT resources and share how and when to use them so you can actually help and maximize your MCAT studying versus getting derailed with the overwhelm of all there is out there. Category one is podcasts. So this is perfect if you have a long commute. If you don't have a long commute, if you're one of those people who like to listen to podcasts when you run, maybe then, but I think the perfect scenario is if you have a commute and you're able to listen to podcasts because over time, the one hour day of podcasts that you listen to over the span of a few months are really gonna add up and help maximize your studying. So there's two kind of different podcasts I would recommend in different times. So one is MCAT Mastery. And if you haven't yet started studying for the MCAT, you're more in the research phase and collecting resources phase, then this is the perfect podcast to listen to just to collect ideas of how others have studied and what their tips are, their tricks, their strategies. And basically you're just collecting lots of different ideas so that once you are at the point where you're starting to get studying, you have a lot of uh, different ideas to pull from and create a kind of a unique and personalized strategy for you. The rest of the MCAT podcasts that I'll list on the screen, these are all kind of content review podcasts with maybe other things sprinkled in like strategy or when to take the MCAT, but the bulk of these are content content review. So this is in, if you're in the thick of studying and you want to have a little bit of studying each day during your commute. My biggest tip for this one would be to the night before or maybe every weekend, you know, if you have a Sunday reset routine or something, picking podcast episodes based on something you know that you just studied. So if on Tuesday you study gluconeogenesis, then you go to a podcast episode on gluconeogenesis to listen to the next morning. Or you could do it the opposite. You could kind of use these as a way to get a first pass of material. So if you know on Tuesday you're going to study gluconeogenesis, Genesis because that's the chapter that is written in your study schedule, then Monday on your commute, you can listen to the podcast Gluconeogenesis, be a first pass. And then when you read that chapter on Tuesday, you might have a better time reading that chapter because it's now your second pass of that material. My second tip when it comes to this list of podcasts is to maybe even before you start studying, this could be another pre MCAT study phase is listen to one to three episodes of all four of them and then choose which one you like the best. Like if there's just one that the person is funnier or that person is really relatable, and you just enjoy that podcast more, then pick that one and just use that one as your main go-to podcast during your commute. Because when you're driving and on your way to work, you actually want to listen and be engaged. The last thing you want to do is like always have a podcast episode on, but you're not really paying attention. So you're not listening to music and like having those good vibes and you're not really learning anything because you're totally zoning out because you just don't click with that podcast. So do the work early and just like try all of them and then pick one that you enjoy and you think you're really going to be most engaged with. The second category is free practice questions. So keep in mind, you have UWorld or your AAMC bundle and you're doing passage-based practice questions from that. So this is more like, how are we specifically going to double down on our weaknesses? That's where our free practice questions come in. So three examples. Number one, you're in your content review phase. You're doing the questions at the end of each chapter. And then you finish a chapter and you're like, mm, this isn't really sticking like the rest. And I just feel like I'm not quite getting it. So maybe you watch a video on that specific topic and then you want to try more practice questions, but you just did the practice questions at the end of the chapter. Bam, go to Khan Academy or Jack Weston and do 10, 20, however many you need practice questions on that specific topic until you feel like, okay, now I'm starting to understand it. Again, content review is kind of like your first pass, so you don't have to master it, but if you want that extra little supplement, that is how you can do that. And then similarly, similarly, if you're doing passage-based practice, you're reviewing your answers, you read an answer explanation, and this topic keeps coming up over and over and over, like physics, like mirrors and images, holy moly, I keep missing every single one. I'm reading the explanation again, and again, I'm still like not quite getting it. I'm not confident that, ne that the next time I see a question on mirrors and images, I'm gonna get it right. So then go to Khan Academy or Jack Weston and do 10 to 20 questions on mirrors and images until you're like, okay, I'm starting to get the theme. I'm starting to understand how to use these equations and do these like arrows and things. And the next time I have a practice question on that topic, feel like I have a better chance of getting it right. Lastly, for me, cars was a big weakness of mine. I knew I would need a long extended time to just chip away at that weakness and make it into a strength for me. So if you're like, ah, yeah, no, I got cars. That's no problem. Physics though is my biggest weakness or OCHEM is my biggest weakness. Then maybe you just want to get into this daily ritual of doing 10 practice questions a day on your biggest weakness at the start of your study session or the end. And that's where free supplemental like 
questions would come in. Hopefully that gives you a good way to like not get overwhelmed with how much free practice questions you could find and strategically use them instead. All right, there's only one in this category, but I think it's incredibly important right after you register for the MCAT or if maybe you haven't officially registered, but at some point, not too soon, so you don't like forget all the things, but like you're, you know your MCAT test date and you're about to get started studying or and or you just registered for it, please, please, please read the AANC MCAT Essentials. There's always a guidebook that is updated every year and you will learn important information on like what you can bring on test day and just like the logistical information that you need to know. And it's better to know sooner rather than later. So like the day before test day, you aren't realizing, holy moly, I can't bring a calculator to this. Like what? I've been studying for five months with a calculator and your world just comes crashing down. So I think this is like a boring one, but very, 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 very essential. And this is created by the company that creates the MCAT test. And they're the ones giving you this MCAT test. And it's their guidebook of little logistical things to know for test day and like testing with accommodations and how like it explains like what you're going to have on test day to write things down and things like that. So please, please, please read this so you're not overwhelmed with learning this kind of information the day before test day. <laughs> Number four is when you need support on a specific topic. Similar to the free practice questions and you just need like 10 extra questions to double down on the weakness or something that's not sticking. Same things with videos. If you read an answer explanation and you're like, I don't get it, or you read a chapter and you're like, I don't get it. Then the best thing to do really is go to YouTube and just search that specific topic. But let's list a few go-tos that you can have in kind of like your toolkit for when you need support with a specific topic. So one, I love Armando. I just love the way he explains things. If you're a visual learner, he draws it out and I think they're absolutely fantastic. So if you read a biochem chapter and you're like, I don't get this whole like Google Neogenesis thing, like see if he has a video on it and watch that. And then second, I think MCAT Mnemonic Monday videos, it's Med School Coach. I think they have a whole series on MCAT mnemonics. So if you read a biochem chapter, I'll just keep using biochem as a an example and you're like I need a way to make this stick because like I understand it but I'm not going to remember it head to the MCAT mnemonic videos and see if they have a mnemonic for the topic that you just read again you could google it too but you know this is a whole series and it's like MCAT specific so that can be really really helpful for getting things to stick that are a little harder than other topics then for everyone unless you are just like a rock star at cars right off the bat Jack Weston has this like top six cars strategy video that I think anybody could watch and like see if those strategies would be helpful for you to apply to your studying. And then lastly, of course, Khan Academy, they are like affiliated with AMC. So any topic that you're reading in content review or doing practice questions on, and it's not sticking, you can always go to Khan Academy and they have tons of free videos. Also, if you're one of those people who are like, I know myself and there is no way I can read all those chapters. It won't stick. It won't work. Then Khan Academy is going to have videos on like the majority of your chapters. So you could just use your content review books as like a way to kind of plan out what chapters you're going to do per day and like maybe skim it, but then go to Khan Academy to watch the videos if that's how you know you would study best. Number five is if you're like me and you like to see kind of like an overview or make these like one page cheat sheets and like have lots of information chunked into a review page kind of deal, then this category is free resources that will help you do that. So first I have to mention this because I know so many students very, very successfully use this. And that is the MCAT Bros psych social review sheet. It's literally like people will just skip the book in their set of content review books and use this MCAT review. I mean, MCAT Bros review sheet of all of, it has all of psych social in this PDF. So if you're somebody who just wants to look at the list of psych social vocab words and start memorizing, I mean, I didn't do it, but I'm recommending it because I've just heard tons of people use it and they don't even read the book. So I, I would feel weird if I didn't tell you about that, if you don't already know about it. So that is a good, like kind of literal, like complete review page of all of psych social. Second, Kaplan has the, these MCAT quick sheets that I had the Kaplan books when I was studying and it's just chunked very well with like a high level overview of all the sections on the MCAT and I think it's really good to refer to especially if you want to make like a equation sheet for test day and start like planning out what you're going to have on that equation sheet it's something that's really good to like look to and kind of use that as for making your own equation sheet that you can like write out on test day and lastly mile down review sheet it's this 92 page 90 ish page pdf and it just has a lot of terms and all of the sections of the MCAT pictures so it's a really good visual like there's other free sheets out there and stuff but I think with Without visuals, it's not that helpful. Anyway, 
I just think this is a very good comprehensive review sheet. So if you're trying to make like a study guide, let's say again, our biochem example, you read through a couple chapters and you're like, ah, this information is so scattered in my head. Like how should I write it down? And instead of spending time like flipping through all those pages again, like 60 pages and trying to come up with like a, a review sheet to make it make sense in your brain, then you could use this review sheet and be like, okay, here's the high level overview of things for biochem. Then you can write out your own review sheet from like those couple of pages versus going back through like 60 pages. So I think that could also be really helpful. Resource overwhelm is absolutely no joke, but now between this video and last week's, you should know exactly what to use and how to use it and when to use it when it comes to studying for the MCAT. So if you haven't already seen last week's video, watch that so you know exactly what study materials to use for like the core essential resources for your MCAT studying in all three phases. And now you have this video, the free supplemental resources. So you're good to go. Hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.